It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Z Garcia. Hey everybody, today I'm taking a look at a card drafting family weight game called Sheep and Thief published by Pegasus Spiel. And this one is a reprint of a Japanese game from a few years ago, which I happen to have right here, Sheep and Thief as well. I actually did a review of this original one some time ago, so if you wanted to, you could go back and check that one out as well. But I, I, I figured this one was enough of a of a different production to warrant its own look so that's what i'm going to be doing today as i said the game has a little bit of drafting in it you also then take that those drafted cards and play them in front of you as tiles try to make connections have sheep on your little farm and protect those sheep uh from the other players so uh they don't take them away from you let me give you a look at how it works we'll come on back I'll tell you a little bit more about it, what I thought about it, and I'm going to compare it to the original one and see what they did right here and if they did anything wrong. All right, here we go. The game's going to be played over three rounds with each round involving two parts. First thing you'll do is you'll draft some cards. Everyone's going to be given a few of these. You keep one past the rest. Keep doing that. And then you're going to, for the second part, play some cards to the board here trying to make victory points. At the end of three rounds, you are going to get victory points from each sheep you have on your board or on your pen. You're gonna get one victory point for that. If you connect your starting location here to this town, you get five victory points. To this town, you make five victory points. If you make it down here, you get a bonus 10 victory points. And then you'll also make some victory points from river cards that you'll play throughout the game, all right? Uh, so that's basically it. Each player is going to have one of these boards. I'm just going to show you one for the sake of simplicity, but everyone gets a starting card. They're double-sided for ease. And everyone puts one of these uh, fox tokens in the, uh, in the denoted spot. Okay, everyone's board is identical. And then you can begin the game. You are going to deal everyone five cards from the shuffle deck here, and then everyone's going to take a look at those cards. They'll keep one. They'll pass the rest, they'll get another four from their neighbor, they'll keep one, pass the rest, and so on until you've drafted five cards. After that, from the start player again, you will play a card to your board as long as it is adjacent to another card already there. And then the next player will play one and so on. From the five you are holding, you are going to play four and carry one over to the next round in which you will both draft the other way. And you are going to be dealt four cards to bring you back up to five. All right. So what do the cards do? What does everything mean? Well, the cards are going to feature a couple of different things. You are going to have roads, which you do not have to connect. This is perfectly legal, though I am, of course, cutting off that road. It's not ideal, but you can do it. They're going to have sheep on the little cards here in uh, various groupings. Sometimes you have a single sheep. Sometimes you have more than one. And in fact, each player starts with one up here on their starting card. You are going to see little dogs that are going to move your sheep around. You are going to see rivers that are going to score you victory points. But they are harder to deal with because you have to connect rivers. They must touch only the edge of the board or another river. And so this card play here would not be legal. This card play here is legal, though I am restricting what can be played here later on. So, for example, that would be a very good play. But uh, it does restrict, of course, that, you know, this card cannot now go there and so on. And then finally, you'll have some cards that show you the fox. And the fox, when you play a card with said fox, you are going to move the fox on your board. As many spaces as there are foxes on the card you played. And then each player is going to replicate exactly what you did. If you land the fox on anyone else's board where they have sheep that are not protected, you are going to take those and you'll put them in your pen to keep them for scoring. What does it mean to be protected? Well, some cards feature a little uh, house, and if they are there, they will be safe. And the way you get them there, you start with one here, you'll draft some other little houses. The way they end up there is with the dogs. When you play a card with dogs, like so, this one has a sheep, one dog. I get to move 
as many uh, spaces as the number of dogs on that new card. And I can move a group of sheep. So in this case, I can move that sheep to there. And it is now safe. If this card had brought into play two sheeps, I could move both with the dog. All right. This is going to continue once you've played your four cards. As I said, you are given some more. You play a second round. And then again for a third round, you will typically fill in 13 of the 16 spaces here. You can now play where the fox is, by the way, wherever it ends up. And then you score up, as I explained at the beginning. That's basically it. Highest score wins. The game also comes with a couple of small variants in which you are going to... Uh, oh, I've shuffled in my starting card in here. Let's put that back on. You are going to change the starting sheep for a black sheep here in the beginning card, in the starting card. And this little cheat sheet, you'll flip that over to be a visual aid. And this is another thing you can do throughout the game. It's a new way to score in addition to everything else you already know. The way it works is whenever you can move sheep with the doggies, you can use it to move this one. Of course, there you know, being a card there, like so. And uh, it will be moving around anytime a fox catches the black sheep. It's not consumed. It simply comes back to the beginning. And at the end of the game, depending where that sheep ends up, you are going to get some bonus victory points. All the way from nothing in the starting spot. Uh, if it's right here, it would be a single bonus point. But if you can get it all the way down here without being captured, and it's there at the end of the game, that's a whopping 15 bonus points. So that is one of the variants. The other variant, the second variant that you could play together or individually, is the mission card. At the beginning of the game, everyone is going to receive a random mission card, and it's going to give you some secret scoring opportunity that you can shoot for. So for example, this mission here says if, if the thief is standing uh, right next to a city at the end of the game, then you're going to get three gold uh, bonus points. This one here, Mission 7, says the most cards with a fox. And so at the end of the game, you're going to check how many cards you've played that feature at least one fox, a fox. If you have the most, you get a bonus 5 gold. If you are tied for the most, you get a bonus 2 gold. And so on. Some say the bottom two rows, having the most sheep in the bottom two rows, having the most sheep in the rightmost two columns, uh, things like, uh, let's see the most cards with sheep printed on them, longest road, most barns, uh, that, that sort of thing. Longest uh, river as well as one of them. And again, you can combine those two. You can buy, combine the black sheep with the missions. You can play just one, just the other. But that's pretty much the game. That should give you an idea of how it works. It's very quick, pretty simple and straightforward. So let's go back up top. Let me tell you a little bit more about it and, of course, compare it a little more to the original printing. All right, so there we go, Sheep and Thief. First thing, of course, I noticed when I heard about this game, when I first heard about it, I was really excited because I, I am a huge fan of this original one. I really, really enjoyed the game. I thought there were a couple of uh, production, not issues, but sort of things I was not particularly thrilled with in the original printing of it. But then when I saw this in person, the first thing that floored me, and not necessarily in a good way, was the size of the box. This is a huge box compared to the original printing. Is that size box warranted? Well, I'm not sure. You see the, the boards in this one, they do basically take up almost the entire size of the box here, and they are very nice, sturdy cardboard, well printed, they're great, I'm glad to have them. The original one, the way they got around that is it was a paper fold out for each player, which was easily my biggest issue with the game originally. Those things never laid flat. They had creases all over them. They were just not ideal. And then in the original one as well, the sheep that you had were not little sheep wooden pieces. They were not meeples. They were these sort of strange cotton balls, which weren't quite cotton. They were a little bit thicker, a little bit more dense than that. But they rolled, and they could roll off the map or roll off the cards since, you know, you, they might be laying across a, a crease on the board. I eventually actually even got rid of those, which is why I can't show them to you now. And I bought some little meeples, a lot like the ones in the printing now. So I had some issues with the original. The new one, though, I have to say, yes, the box is big. Um, 
yes, uh, maybe it shocked me at first, you know, knowing especially the size of the original one. But it is fantastically made. The pieces are great. Artwork is great. The boards, oh, I mean, I w it wouldn't have been a thing if I hadn't been familiar with the original ones. But they are so good. It's so easy to play now, you know. And I think the whimsical look they're going for here, while similar in, in concept a little bit to the original one, and its whimsical look really works. They've gone completely for the animal theme here. In the original one, the, the thieves were people. They were actual thieves. In this one, they just have the dogs and the sheep and the, and the foxes and all of that. And, and it's, it's great. That is fantastic. I love the, the, the vibe of it. It's really a very welcoming look to the whole thing. The cards themselves, these are the new cards. These are the original cards. As you can see, the new ones are slightly smaller, but they're not problematically so. These are the backs. And again, th this is the exact same card in both games. I find the quality in both to be great, but, but this is going to take a lot of punishment. It's well finished. It's got a good look to it. And once you play the card down, you can pretty much ignore it. So they've gone ahead and done a lot of little Easter eggs, a lot of cute drawings, silly things. Every time I play this with someone new, they have to mention, oh, look at the sheep, look at what that one's doing, or oh, look at that, you know, fox being sneaky. I, I love that it makes people want to see more cards, you know. And so the draft, while you're looking for things that are strategically important, also lead to a lot of ah uh, moments, right? Great, love that. Because that means I can get it to the table more often, you know. Production is really superb. And as I said already, and continue to say, the game is fantastic. I think it is a severely underappreciated family weight game. One that plays very quickly. One that's gonna give you a lot of interesting choices. And one that now includes a couple of variants. That Black Sheep variant was, in fact, available before as a sort of promo to the original one. It was not in the box. Now it's in the box, and they've gone ahead and added those mission cards, and that is entirely new. That had not been out before, as far as I know, in any form. So, I would very much recommend you get this game. Hopefully, it'll now be much more easy to, uh, to attain, and it is going to, I think, be a big hit if you want to play with a mixed group of the kids and the parents, if you want something that's a nice quick filler with a little bit of meanness with moving the fox and capturing other people's pieces, but not too much. You really want to try to do well yourself. So big, big thumbs up from me. This one gets a seal of excellence, no question. And I recommend you check it out, as I said. That is Sheep and Thief. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.